I got it. It's fine. You don't have anything in your teeth. Thanks. No. If I did, you would tell me, right? Nope. Really? It's like a horrible friend. <laughs> horrible friend. You were first introduced into my life as Phoebe's oh, brother geez. on Friends. Okay, here And we I knew go. that I recognized you, but I hadn't really seen you do anything before that. Mm -hmm. So tell me how you got your start. You mean on the show or no, is it before? don't care about that. Got oh. that covered. I'm talking about like in the industry. Well, I grew, I grew up being an actor. I was, um, I was I, and I think, you know, I, I, apparently my mother was saying that I, that I was begging her to, or saying that I wanted to be an actor since, since I was four years old. And I think that was just- Four? Yeah, I, I think, have a four year old. Am I supposed to believe what he says? Yes, of course. Okay. I think I think okay. that's healthy. I think um, no, but I, I uh, yeah, I, you know, I grew up in the '70s, the blockbuster era. Star Wars, I think, was the, oh, yeah. the first movie that I saw, and uh, and so then at, you know, and I was I was really uh, uh, I, I was persevering, you know, I was really um, persistent, and I guess w when I was about nine years old, uh, a friend of ours down the street, three houses down, got an agent. And you would, I would thought that that was like the most incredible, and so it, it, you know I went from like you got an agent to my mom being like, well, what do we, you know? And so yeah. we met with that agent, and then and then I was a nine-year-old uh, child actor running around Los Angeles. You know, um, we I'd have five auditions a day, I think. Uh, you know, and uh, was that also your mom's at that point full time job? Because I can't imagine. Yeah, it became yeah. like that. You know, it was something that I think it was th that the the big you know the lights and all that and run to the lights and so it was this thing that you didn't want to say no to. And I was really pushing her as well. Um, um, but it was uh, yeah, I remember we would be you know the Valley and then Culver City and Hollywood and then back to the Valley and and running around till eight o'clock at night. Until, um, yeah, and so that was. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, what about you? How did you get your start? Well, I, I will tell you, but I, right now I'm on a show called The Mick, and we have two, we have, there's three kids. One of them, Sophia Black D'Elia, is actually 25, so she's not really a kid, but oh, wow. there are two kids, and I'm constantly like, is this okay? <laughs> is yeah. what I'm doing okay? Yeah. It's nice to talk to grounded, well-rounded adults who had a career as children and they yeah. weren't ruined, because I don't want to <laughs> ruin them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's a crazy thing because you, it's this very false world, right? Where everyone wants to bring you everything, but mm -hmm. it's really because they don't want you wandering off. Yeah, I don't know, I, yeah. That's a weird message for kids, like, mm -hmm. oh, like everyone's just gonna bring me everything and I can, like, it's, it's important to explain to them why you know how yeah. did your parents keep you well i th we had a really disciplined household and i think that that was something that they said okay so if you want to do this then that's what you want to do but you, you're still a member of the family right. and you still have chores and you still have our rules or our parameters yeah. you know and so it depends i think that there's a, a lot of times parents uh it's it's a different thing and i've seen that and i saw that growing up where it's almost like they're hawking their children out I, I didn't grow up in a household That's like that. That's so great. No, yeah. yeah, so I think if you, yeah, I mean, as long as, like, I think the parent part is really important. Yeah, and then, absolutely. And then you're in business. But it is a surreal thing because going to school on set and, and, and growing up. Did you go up, to a real school or did, was your school? Yeah, you had to have a real school and then, and then you do, uh, when you weren't shooting the show, you'd be at the real school, but when you were shooting, then you would have your, your yeah. assignments and they would give you sort of a program. And and it was very strange because you would do you had to do three hours a day, but you could move those hours around. Mm -hmm. So it was basically a total of fifteen hours a week, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's interesting because you have the responsibility of that, and, and and you and you do you know I think that any any education is really sort of up to the student. Mm -hmm. um, but but then uh, you also have this responsibility to uh, to work, you know, as a yeah. professional, and your your talk your I guess your schoolmates in a way are are. Uh, you know, producers on the TV yeah. show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or whatever you're doing at the time. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely, it was, it was a different upbringing. And, and I don't know, I mean, I, I, I still consider 
uh, myself lucky and, and, and fortunate it's from that. It's amazing. And you seem like a very smart guy. It's not like you didn't. I do. Wow, thanks. Oh, Gosh, yeah. that's really nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. yeah, yeah. Super smart. You seem like a smart gal. <laughs> Is there something you want to ask me, Grandma? I can't help but wonder, Pete, if you came back looking to take advantage of us. Um, so how did you, yeah, how did you get your start? Um, so I, uh, I, I graduated from high school. I knew I wanted to move to Los Angeles, but I wanted to go to college first, partly because I just wanted to be a person with a college degree, but also I just was very, I was a very young, immature 17, 18 year old. 18 year old. So I mm -hmm. wanted to stay close to my parents. I didn't want to get too far away from them. I went, I grew oh, up like in Oregon. Oh, like immature, like you didn't want to leave the nest. Yeah, as like I to wasn't, like, party, I wasn't the party. party. No, no, I wasn't right. like dying to get away from my mom and dad. I was like, I'm not ready to leave them. Right. So I grew up in Oregon. I went to the University of Oregon. It was two hours away from my house. Wow. If I missed them on the weekend, I could go home, and I did that often. Wow. Um, yeah, and then when, yeah, when your I. Your mom's here now. She's right? here today. Yeah, Hi, she's visiting. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, so as soon as I graduated from college, then I moved to Los Angeles, and I, um, I started- What did you study in college? Theater, yeah. Wow. So I was a theater major, and I did a bunch of, a ton of dramatic stuff, a ton of comedic stuff. Mm -hmm. It was great. Um, what but is I, that like? I don't mean to interrupt, but, sorry, yeah. but what is the, the, the university college uh, theater experience like? I was able to. It's probably a general question. Sorry, I don't. Know no, I think that. it's great. I, I was. Like, I think I got a, a little bit of a false sense of myself because I was able to audition for stuff and I kind of got everything. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a you know it was a smaller pond. So then when I moved here, I was like, oh, well, I'm just yeah, gonna just look at this, this guy right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it was a it was a whole it was a whole different thing. It was really cool. I mean, I went to it wasn't just a comedy school. It was a theater school. So you learn like we it was a heavy. Influ a Shakespeare influence. So, but was it like scene study, or was it like was lo it was like very dialects um, or Stanislavski? Movement? Oh, a lot yeah. of dialect stuff, a lot of scene study, yeah. a lot of um, yeah. It was it was varied. Uh huh. Um, and, and did it was you just agree fun. with that? Because there's, the, 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 I mean, that sounds like a lot of different approaches or uh, processes to. Uh, I mean, because Stanislavski is definitely different from you were, Method yeah, and, yeah, but you're from like the groundlings or, or yeah. something. And then there's also a lot of that that's really similar, I think. Yeah, to this was really interesting. So it always, the acting I had done before that, it had always just sort of come naturally and I had mm -hmm. just sort of felt it. So I remember taking a, um, a technical class mm -hmm. And it was very specific about doing scene study and taking a drink at a certain time. And I was like, oh, this is going to be ridiculous. It was wow. so awesome. And yeah. it opened, it, it just was like mind blowing because I was like, oh, you can have your own instincts. And then you can also add this other stuff that's very specific. specific in fact, to... yeah, like one thing that I'm really proud of in the show that I'm doing now, The Mick, the, in the pilot, mm -hmm. um, I have this one scene with, Mickey's got a scene with Alba where she's explaining to her that um, she can't believe that Alba's not allowed to use the pool. I chose to eat an apple during that scene, mm -hmm. but it was specific to the fact that I thought it would be really funny if I was eating during the scene. Because mm -hmm. it'd be funny if I was chewing and eating <laughs> while saying that there were all these injustices like, happening because yeah, it was yeah, just right. like the dichotomy that was really funny to me. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think it really affected, um, I, I, I think before I thought I was like, ah, it's just all instinct, I've got this. And it was nice to know that, no, you can really learn stuff, which takes me to the Groundlings. That's where right. I first started was I moved here and my mm -hmm. friend actually wanted to go audition for the Groundlings and I was terrified. He was like, just come with me. And I was yeah. like, okay. So I auditioned and I did that and got in and then. And what's that like? I did, I, when I was 16 years old, there was an improv group out in New York and, um, and I started, I, you know, that was like, I, I, for a minute there, I uh, didn't want to do acting. Uh, What'd you, why? And then, I don't know, I think I was, I was just doing things that, that I didn't, I, I, you know, I, I was just grow, being, grew into being a teenager yeah. and I just was like not want, I don't know. And then, and then I, uh, I discovered method acting and Marlon Brando and, yeah. and uh, Robert De Niro and started getting educated in that way and and went oh this is this is actually something that can can be effective and isn't just uh, being a, a marionette doll or whatever you mm -hmm. know at that time um, and I think it was you know there was just a, a growth period or so or some rite of passage and so I went to New York and I and I remember learning about um, the, some of the techniques in uh, 
improvising, mm -hmm. which is like, I, there was like one of the things that was when you're, when you come up, they say they give you something to, to uh, open the scene with, and then you, uh, you don't disagree. Yeah, you, you don't ever say, say yes. no. Yeah, you say yes. Yes, and. Um, and th that was like one of the things that I remember. And then I remember we did it the moment that it happened, and I remember f saying yes, and then we got a laugh, and I was like, oh, this is actually working, and there's actually a whole deal to this that you take for granted yeah. when you're just watching somebody improvise or s be, yeah. you know, really creative on the spot. Yeah, I actually, I notice that with my kids now, too, when I hear them talking to each other when one of them's like, no, you didn't. I'm like, whoa, like to me, it's so deeply ingrained that you don't say no. Mm -hmm, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You say yes, and then you build on it. Mm -hmm. to, it's uh, like, be, The Groundlings is just such a, I mean, it's an amazing training ground, but it's so yeah. deeply ingrained in me not to say no to anything now yeah. that it's really fascinating. So I find that popping up everywhere. <laughs> Sabrina, it's me! Ah! Listen to me, you can't just steal owls. If you free this owl, I will murder another one, just to even the score. So, know that. This is an insane message. Call me back. Well, I was wondering um, <laughs> if you had, an, if you had a, a horror story uh, uh, from an audition, an, an experience. Yeah, so, so in Los Angeles we have pilot season, right? Mm -hmm. So before I was doing anything, I was going out for pilot season, which is just like, for me, was the worst time of the year. It's just so hard. Uh, yeah. This is like, you know, 12, 13 years ago when you actually had to drive all the way to your agent's office to pick up the sides and then drive home oh, and memorize. Right. It was like, yeah. and you'd have three auditions a day. Yeah, wow. And I went to this one audition and um, it was for a comedy, some sitcom, and it was a, a team of women, they were casting directors. And I did the audition, they were like, that's great. So, but the thing is that she's really sad. So can you do it again and just do it so you're really sad? And I'm like, yeah, in my head, I'm like, okay, like this is a comedy, but sure. So I get really sad. And then they're like, okay, let's try it again. Maybe you're not understanding. She's really sad. And I was like, okay. And at this point, I'm almost crying. Like I'm, I'm yeah. doing exactly what I think they're asking. And I'm yeah. like, so sad. It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> I leave there. I'm like, I don't even know what that happened. What happened? That was ridiculous. I call my agent. Uh, they call me back. My manager calls me, and she was like, "Okay, so here's the thing. Um, not that I agree with this, but they they suggest that you take an acting class because you weren't able to take the note. Wow. What happened was they were saying that they wanted me to make it like ridiculous." Like in a oh, funny way. Yeah, go over the top with the and sadness. And I was like, you told me to make it real yeah. sad rather oh. than ridiculous. And I was like, real I'll and really. I'll never forget that she wow. told me to take an acting class. I was oh like, my mm -hmm. God. Yeah. But I, I do remember going, oh, okay. And do you think that I should take an acting class, Amy? Or what did she say? She was like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, no. no. Yeah, it's like we, Ed Wood, uh, angrier, angrier. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you're not that angry. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Like, hey, how about you take a coaching class? Because, yeah, right. wow, uh, that yeah. made no sense. Yeah, exactly. Why don't you take that? Was mine. What about you? Did you have horrible auditions? Oh God, I mean, I think every yeah. audition experience can be horrible. But yeah, I, but yeah, there was right. one. most of them were horrible. But yeah, except the was, ones you booked. I remember I did. Um, I I was ten years old and I did a. Um, ten years old. Yeah, I was in the middle of doing a, 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 a two episodes of this show called Highway to Heaven, mm -hmm. uh, where it was Michael Landon, he's an angel who's got a mullet or whatever, you know, <laughs> and uh, and I, my character had to have cancer, uh, leukemia, and so I, you know, I baked my head and and um, you know I was bald, and I think in the middle of the episode or just after uh, we decided to. Um, we had other auditions and things, and, and I had to. Uh, well, we got a wig for, for oh. me, but it was like it was. Uh, it was. I think we bought it on Hollywood Boulevard oh, or, no. or whatever. And it literally, I put it on it, and it looked like like Donald Trump. <laughs> it, was, it looked like so I was a ten year old. And you were ten. Was yeah. it an adult wig? Tell me, it was an adult wig. I don't even know. Boy. It was. It was honestly like a mammal. It was like my, <laughs> <laughs> like. A, Hunting for this thing, and so then I remember I, I had this audition. It was a co comedic thing, which I guess maybe those are the, the more challenging ones to do. Um, and uh, I had this idea of being ten years old. I um, I was gonna wear a hat on the wig, sure, on my head, yeah, 
And then at the end, I was going to take off the hat, and then the wig would come off with it, and there would be, <laughs> you know, it would be like funny. <laughs> And I remember I went in there, and I, I think it was one of the first times. Well, I mean, I was young. I don't know. I, it was like, wow, that was it was awful. The the reading was awful, and it was kind of like one of these things, where they said, uh, "That's great, thank you very much." And I said, "Okay." So I was like, "God, am I going to do the bit?" And I turned around, <laughs> and I had this crossroads, and I and I went. I'm going to do it, and so I turned back around <laughs> and took it off, and the wig. And I was bald, and the reaction was like, "Ooh!" <laughs> it was just like we turned around first, and then came back. Yeah, around. I was like, "I'm gonna like da da." <laughs> and so that was the. And even now, I cringe. Well, look, ten-year-old boys are hilarious. You good? I like to think I am. Yeah. You... Yeah. Okay. Get too fast? No, roll. I don't know what my brother told you, Vince, but uh, we're not looking for card players. What are you looking for? What everybody's looking for deep down in their hearts, money. So, I have to ask you how you were introduced to Sneaky Pete and what attracted you to it and let you know that my husband and I are super into it and think it's oh, amazing. Oh, cool, oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah, um, I guess it was just this sort of standard fare. You know, you get a phone call from your agent and, and, and then a meeting was set up um, and I went in and uh, met with them, and, and Brian was in the middle of shooting something out of town, so he was on Skype, um, and... Had you met him before? Uh, no, uh, okay. but I was a big fan, uh, needless to say. I think, I, I mean, I really, maybe there's a side note, but I, I really think that he's one of our great American he's actors. He's amazing. You know? Yeah, and um, so it was just even just to go into a room and meet him, uh, and then, um, and I read it, and it was really good. Uh, it was actually a, a show that was originally at CBS. Oh, um, really? Yeah, and and it was going to be a one-hour show for them. So David Shore uh, was was the uh, the showrunner, um, and there were uh, uh, Seth Gordon, who's uh, mm -hmm. who was also a, he's still a producer, but he was directing the episode. So it was it was it was just one of those things that that seemed. Um, to make sense, and then uh, we shot the pilot. I mean, it was doing hour-long episode, and I guess it really does depend on the director, and I think I've, I've heard that the first season of any hour-long deal can be really Long. intense. Yeah. Um, and it was New York in the winter, and uh, it was just insane. So we didn't get picked up and then from CBS, but then it went over to Sony, who's the production company, uh, took it over to Amazon. I don't Which know if a, that was interesting it at is. all or whatever. No, it, it totally is because right. Amazon and Netflix and Hulu and I like all of those are really exploding now. So it's like yeah, kind yeah. of a big deal. And it's, I mean, I, I can't tell you uh, how happy we, uh, you know, also just the, the, the um, other cast members on the show uh, and that New York uh, sensibility um, and shooting in New York as well. It's in New York. Uh, is absolutely its own character, you yeah. know, and it will write itself into the, any story, you know, if you're shooting there and improvise with you constantly, and, and it's such a challenge, but so uh, great, because you, you, you see that sort of hearty determinism, I guess, I don't know, in the things that I, you know, um, in, in the rest of the cast. You look really good in that dress, by the way. Thanks, it's breezy on my vagina. Yeah, yeah, maybe don't mention that, though. Now, listen, there are three things you've got to remember today, okay? Number one, go wherever the girls go. Do whatever the girls do. Number two, and this one's critical. You, my, are we here already? What about you? What got you interested in, 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 in the MIG? How, how did you get involved in that? Well, I was, um, so we're in season 12 of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which just completely reminded me of what you were saying because Philadelphia is definitely a character in mm -hmm. that show. Mm -hmm. um, and a couple of our writers, John and Dave Chernin, mm -hmm. um, decided to go off and write this show. And I knew they were, they were very respectful. They weren't coming to me, but I knew from Rob and from Rob's manager, Nick, who is their manager, that they were kind of writing it with me in mind. And I was like, that's nice. I don't know how it, I would ever be able to do something like that, though, because I was yeah. on the show. Um, but they ended up selling it to Fox right around um, a time where we were renegotiating, because it was the end of Sunny. At, it's, oh, it's always the end of Sunny, and then yeah. we get re <laughs> renewed right. for two more seasons. Right. Yeah. So it was the end at, at season 10, and we were being renewed for two more, and they came to me and gave it to me. And I honestly was like, 
first of all, I love these guys. I think they are so funny and yeah. so awesome, and it would be great to work with them. But I didn't want to do another show. I, I didn't do two at a time. I have two little boys at home, and yeah. um, it's been great just doing Sunny and being able to sort of like be really picky and decide what else I want to do and not be committed to two TV shows. Right. I mean, doing one is insane. It's a it, but, well, but sort are, of. Are you but doing? Sunny, um, 22 episodes or whatever no, the normal? No, so, so Sunny is only 10 right. episodes a season. Right. So it's really like, for me, I'm not producing it or writing it or anything like that. It's just a, it's a two month commitment. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty easy. And I've been doing that for a while, which sure. has been great because I've, you There's know, a familiarity there. There's a familiarity, like a but also family. I started having, my first baby is six now. So six years ago I started yeah. having kids and it was nice to be a mom and then work for a couple months. But yeah. now they're both in preschool and I read it. Yeah. And honestly, it was so funny and this character was so amazing. Yeah, and it's I was a great like, premise. I could just make this so good. And mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so I just, I wanted to do it. And then John Langraff, who runs FX, called Dana Walden and Gary uh, Newman, who run Fox, and he was like, come on, we can do this. And Wow. And they just I think you're the only me person do who's doing that right now, who's doing I two shows. I doubt that. Um, no, I, I think, that, and that's great. It's amazing. But what about the Mick? Is that a, a potential 22 episode thing? Or So we did, we got picked up, this year we did 17. Wow. And we got picked up for another season. So far we're going to do 13, and we'll see what happens if they want to pick us up. Congratulations. I yeah. really thank you very much. I like doing a short, a smaller number because I'm such a perfectionist. Like, I don't really care about quantity. I just want it to be mm -hmm. really good. So yeah. for me, it's better to do like 10 or 13 really amazing yeah. episodes and then. That consolidated thing, I think that when, I don't know when, I, I mean, I don't know when that rule changed. I guess it was like the, yeah. the cable networks or, uh, HBO or whatever, but yeah. yeah, going from this requisite 22 episode thing where you hear, you know, about the, the, the actors on 24 or whatever, yeah. you know, just never seeing any other life beyond I know. the show and the set because you're doing 16 hour days and that I don't one know if Last off. Man on Earth was the first to do it, but I know that Will Forte was very much like, hey, I'm writing it and I'm doing it and I can do 10 or 13 really amazing yeah. ones. And so I, I don't know if that, you know, led the way and I, mm -hmm. but I, yeah, I really agree with that. But I'd, it's, yeah, it kind of found that it's it, this medium ground, I guess. And it, it also, I think, was the genesis of saying, well, we can do a, a seasonal arc yeah. um, over six or 10 episodes as opposed to the procedural thing for 22. Yeah, and now we're living in the age of, Twitter and Facebook, like your fans are perfectly happy to tell you when you've just done an episode that didn't live up to the last one. It's like mm -hmm. nobody can do 22 unbelievable episodes in a row. Like we have yeah. one writer's room. It's just not possible. So, yeah, right. um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a, it's a do lot. you do a lot of social networking and, and, and promotion like that, like with Twitter or Instagram or I'm supposed to, and mm. I, tr I try, yeah. I try. I'm so private and so sensitive that it's kind of hard, but um, I mean, I try and promote both shows as much as possible. Other than that, I'm just kind of like, <laughs> pretend like I don't yeah. care. But I do care. You do care. What do they say? Trolling Twitter.